Hello, Cathedral family and friends. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Every year, my dad used to say, pack your spirit with the spirit of joy at Christmas. And that's the big idea for this weekend. Well, you go all the way back to the first Christmas and there you find, well, news of great joy. The angels said this to the shepherd, we bring you glad tidings of great joy, good news of great joy, that if we have Jesus in our hearts, then there's always room to celebrate. So get ready today to pack your spirit with the spirit of joy. Amen, amen. Wherever you are worshiping with us today, let's sing together of the good news of the newborn king. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the sky Let's lift our voices. Christ by high is heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord. Made in time, behold him come. Offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Take it up and join the heavenly angels and praise the Prince of Peace. Here we go. Thank you, team. If anybody should, well, rejoice at Christmas, it should be the people who've experienced that good news for themselves. Well, that good news gives rise to great joy. Even in the middle of our circumstances, you know, it was the shepherds. They, they went and they visited the Christ child and then they went back to their fields, the same fields, the same stinky sheep that they were watching but it was different now, they were rejoicing. See, that circumstance was the same, but everything was different because they were different. They had experienced that good news for themselves. And so my prayer for you today is that, well, that the Lord would fill you with his joy right in the middle of whatever kind of circumstance you're in right now. Good news of great joy. 
And it's great to have Stephanie with me today. Yes. Stephanie, wow. Hello. So many things happening here at Cathedral <laughs> yes, of Faith. Yes, thanks, Pastor Ken. Normally, I am behind the camera, so this is a little different. But it's great to be here with all of you this weekend, especially at Christmas time. Christmas at Cathedral is always such an exciting time, and this weekend is extra special. We have our annual toy giveaway where we're going to give away 1,000 toys to families. That is our biggest toy drive ever. Way to go, Cathedral. To those of you that have um, purchased toys, to those of you that made a financial donation, thank you so much. We couldn't have done it without you. Way to go, Cathedral. You rock. And because this is the place where the love is lived out, and because we love you, we don't want you to miss out. So if you haven't had a chance to come and experience our outdoor spectacular presentation, we invite you to come out. Um, it runs every night through December 27th, this free animated drive-in show. And then on the weekends, we have live performances and hot chocolate. <laughs> so, even though we may be socially distant, the celebration of Jesus' birth doesn't need to stop. So come celebrate Christmas at Cathedral with us. Hey, Amen. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie does such a great job with our social media. And so thanks for all you thanks, do, Pastor Steph. And yeah, the, the, yeah, the outdoor presentation, it's been so much fun. Yes, it's I awesome. I don't know how many times I've seen it. I mean, we have it <laughs> six neither. times a night, uh, three times a night on the weekends. Yes. I still find myself at the end of each one singing, let it go, let it, let go. it go. Yeah, so <laughs> it's just been a lot of fun. We hope that you can join us. And thank you. Yeah, I've got some good news. Boy, this is a season of good news, and I have some good news for the cathedral family. Our, our IT person, uh, Daniel Herrera, Pastor Daniel, he was giving me the analytics for the year, some of them, on what has happened with our online services. Now, our online streams in different ways on different platforms, but just from our webpage, since the start of the year, we have seen almost 2,000 people make a commitment to Jesus Christ wow. as their Lord and Savior. That's Hallelujah! Yes. Wow! That's, great. That's what Christmas is all about. God's love reaching out to us and us responding to the love of God. And this week, we gave food to more than 7,300 families. It was our biggest week of serving ever in reaching out's history. So thank you. Thank you to all of those who serve, giving your time, your talent, and of course, those who have given resources. Now, I can't thank you enough. Because of your giving, we've been able to continue to serve our community and take the love of Jesus to our Bay Area. And so thank you so much for your giving. As we give today, well, there's lots of ways you can give. You can give through the app, you can give online, you can give by texting the number on your screen, however you give. As we move toward the end of the year, maybe God has, has blessed you this year and well, your investments have gone way up or you got an extra special bonus this year in December. Whatever you could do to just continue to support the work of the church, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for standing with us this year. Let me speak a blessing over you. May the Lord bless you in everything that you do. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord continue to make you a target of his favor in every way, including economics. For those who are struggling right now and, and don't have a job, I pray that God would give you strength and hope and open doors. For those who God has blessed during this time, we've had jobs and haven't missed a paycheck, I pray that God would continue to give you, well, favor and influence, that God would enlarge your territory in every way. That God, you would continue to bless us so we can be a greater blessing in the days ahead. We pray this in the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you as you give. And now here's my buddy, Dr. Wayne, to talk to you about the joy of Christmas.
Imagine Christmas. Imagine joy. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. This Christmas season, we're allowing the Lord to speak to us in a way to expand the possibilities for us to imagine what he has for us. More love, more joy, more peace. And this weekend, we're going to take a look at this Christmas story in 2020 that'll help us understand more fully how to have joy. The Christmas story is the one filled with joy more than anything else. Stores are selling joy. You find it on advertisements. It's on TV. It's in people's yards. This is the season of joy. In fact, when you read the Christmas story, you find that word there over and over and over. And I believe that this weekend, God wants to increase your joy. Whatever level it's on, it's about to go higher. Whatever joy you're experiencing, God's about to overflow it to give you a joy unspeakable. And we're going to take a look at the Christmas story to help us do that. Let me take us, first of all, to the biblical truth that we're going to be looking at this weekend as we let God speak to us. And here's what it says. Joy comes from a focus on the assurance that God has a purpose for my life and everything will be all right. Joy comes when we have this focus on the assurance that God has a purpose for my life and everything will be all right. Well, there's a young lady who's become famous in the last year because she wrote a book called Spark Joy. Marie Kondo has this whole program where she helps people experience more joy in their homes. It's a way to declutter and organize your house. And what she does is she has you go through your closet or go through your drawers and take each item out and hold it and say, does this spark joy on me or doesn't it? And if it sparks joy, then you keep it. If it doesn't, it's out. And we're going to use her model this weekend to understand what we need to hold on to that will help us have joy, that will seal our joy, that will spark joy, and what might be stealing our joy. And what better place to do that than going through the story of Christmas that we find in the Word of God. So I've got a pile of clothes here that we're going to go through and try to figure out what's worth keeping and what's not worth keeping. Some of these we might hold on to them. Some of them we might need to get rid of them because they steal joy. Now, we're going to take a look at several characters in the Bible and understand what the potential was for them to lose joy, to have it stolen from them, and what the potential was for God to spark joy in us. The first one is Mary. And as we go to Luke chapter one, we see these words. It says, God sent the angel Gabriel to a virgin named Mary. Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Notice already, confused and disturbed. She hasn't even gotten the news yet. She's already dealing with some, okay, what's going on here? But it goes on to say this. The angel says, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. Okay, let's take a look at Mary here. Uh, She's our first shirt here. Talk about possibilities for anxiety. Mary was the one. First of all, she's a young teenager. In those days, people got married about age 12 because they usually passed away by 30. So she's probably in her early teens and she finds out, "Hmm, guess what? You're going to have a baby. Talk about anxiety, having to explain to her fiance, having to explain to her family, the gossip, what's going on around her. Imagine the anxiety that she has the potential to experience in that moment. But let's go a little further. She's about to get on a donkey once she's nine months pregnant and ride the last two to three days of her pregnancy on a donkey. Yeah, how many of you have been pregnant would like to ride a donkey all day for three days before delivery? And then she gets to where she's going, Bethlehem, and there's no place for them. Talk about anxiety. And then here she is in the stable in, back there without family, without a doctor, without a midwife. Again, so much potential for anxiety. But you know what brings me even more anxiety thinking about this? 
I know what it was like when God gifted Diane and I with our two sons. The nervousness and anxiety, like, okay, God, how do we do this? Let alone being told you're going to raise the son of God, by the way. So much potential for anxiety. And anxiety is one of those things that can steal our joy. You can't have anxiety and joy at the same time. But notice what happens in this story. In Luke chapter one, this is what the angel says to Mary. You've been chosen by God for a special purpose. You've been chosen by God for a special purpose. Now that's true not only of Mary, but it's true of you. God's chosen you for a purpose. He has a plan for you. And in that moment, in the midst of all the potential anxiety that Mary could be holding on to, what happens is she says to the angel, to the Lord, be it unto me according to your will. I'm available. I'll do what you want. Use me for what you're going to do. Take take me and let your purposes be worked in me. In fact, she goes on in chapter one of Luke to say this when a response, my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Rejoice is another way of saying finding joy. My spirit, my soul finds joy in God, my savior. So in the midst of this moment, when a lot of anxiety can be happening, she finds joy. She rejoices in the Lord by making herself available for God to work in her. Let's go back to that biblical truth we're looking at this weekend. Joy comes from a focus on the assurance that God has a purpose for my life. That's what helped Mary. She knew you're highly favored. God has a purpose and everything's going to be okay. Well, this might not be the shirt we ought to be wearing, even though you think you look good in orange. Anxiety is not going to spark joy in you, but here's something that might. In Psalm 16, verse one, here's what it says. Lord, you fill me with joy in your presence. You fill me with joy in your presence. So here's what happens. Mary realizes if I'm going to have joy, it's recognizing that God is with me. He is present. He is here. And I think this is one of the things that we can struggle with sometimes because We often think about our past. But if you're anxiously looking at the past, it'll steal your joy. The past is unchangeable. And if you're always thinking about the future, what if this and what if that? The future is uncontrollable. You don't know what's going to happen. We have no idea what this Christmas season and what next year, 2021, will hold. But we do know it's not in the past, it's not in the future, but in his presence is fullness of joy. Knowing he is with me, he is present, he has a purpose for me. I know we tend to want to hold on to that anxiety. It's like, oh, but I look so good in this shirt. But if we want to have joy sparked in us, we have to recognize, God, it's you I need to focus on. In fact, when Jesus was about to leave the disciples and be crucified. He has the last supper with them in the upper room. And while he's up there in the upper room, he says, hey, I'm leaving. And they're like, what? We left everything to follow you. Our whole life has been centered around you for three years and you're leaving us? Talk about anxiety. And here's what Jesus says to them in John chapter 15. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain, this word remain also sometimes translates abide. But another way to look at it, if you focus on me and that I'm in you, I've told you this so that you'll have the same joy that I have. I also want your joy to be complete or full. Now, first of all, I'm trying to figure out the whole joy thing heading to the cross, but we'll get to that a little later in the message. He says, if you focus in me, remain in me, then what, you won't have that anxiety. You won't be struggling with all that. In fact, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to take that one and put that one in, in the goodwill basket so they can go someplace else. Again, let's go back to this biblical truth. Joy comes from a focus on the assurance that God has a purpose for my life and everything will be all right. That's how God wants to work in us. 
to focus on he's with us in his presence is fullness of joy. So the first piece of clothing we're getting rid of that steals joy is anxiety. We want to make sure that we recognize that the anxiety that fights against us keeps us from having joy, but in his presence, there's fullness of joy. Let's move on to our second character in this Bible story, and this is Joseph. Now, here's what happens to Joseph in Matthew chapter 1. It says, Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her fiance, decided to break the engagement. And as he lay awake, considering this, he fell into a dream. So notice what's happened. He's just got news from his fiance about what's about to take place. And he lay awake, considering this. I am pretty sure in that moment, as he lay awake considering this, there was a whole lot going on inside of him. And that brings me to the second article of clothing that we might want to get rid of. It hurts. I mean, imagine, here he is thinking, this is the woman I've betrothed to. Now, in those days, betrothal was a lot different than engagement here. We hear a lot of uh, engagements being broken. In those days, it was a legal contract that was signed one year prior to marriage that this was where we were headed. And breaking that contract of betrothal was the same as getting a divorce. Joseph had to be pretty hurt there, laying in bed thinking, what does this mean? You know, it's, it's sort of interesting to me that why didn't God tell Joseph first? By the way, I'm going to appear to Mary tomorrow. Let me give you a heads up. Or wouldn't it have been nice if they were like out on a date together and here they both are and the angel appears like, oh, this is so great. We're going to be part. No. First, he finds out from Mary, hey, there's something I need to tell you. Not only did Joseph have hurt, We can have hurts that rob us, that steal, that deplete, that empty out our joy. Just like anxiety, you can't have hurt, offense, bitterness, and joy at the same time. It just doesn't work. And here's Joseph, who in the midst of this has so much grace that he's trying to figure out how to do this in an upright way, how to do this in a way that's not too difficult for Mary. And then the angel appears to him and says, look, what she's saying is true. And what a blessing Joseph gets because he showed so much grace. He ends up getting to raise the son of God as his dad for all those years here on earth. But hurt can keep us from the joy. And I believe that some of you are watching this weekend and this is the whole purpose you're here. There's hurts that have been hanging in your closet for a long time. Who hurt you? Who was the person who hurt you the most? And as a result of that, you might be saying, Pastor Wayne, you don't understand. But here's what happens. When you hold on to your hurts, it drains your joy. It keeps you from having joy. You might think, I just, I can't do that. But here's a great scripture. The scripture is this. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That he wants to give you the strength to be able to walk through this, to let it go, to release it. Just like Joseph did, to let it go. And and that's why rather than, wrestling with, holding on our hurt. Some of us think by holding on to this hurt, we're punishing those people. But in reality, all you are is draining your own joy. You're here holding all this hurt and resentment and they're off at Krispy Kreme eating a cream-filled donut. They don't even know. That's why it's time this weekend to let go. Well, let's go to another possible clothing item here that might give us a better message. It says, forgive everyone everything. You're like, wait, 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 wait. You don't know what they did. But the reality is, you might think they don't deserve it, 
but we don't deserve the forgiveness we've received. Jesus has forgiven us everything. And if you want to experience joy, then you've got to take that hurt shirt. Again, you might look really good in red, but you've got to take that hurt shirt and you've got to say, okay, I'm done with that. It's over. I I know that what I need to do is I need to find that place for forgiveness. I need to let that guide me instead of my hurt. That's the possibility of stealing joy or sparking joy. Well, let's go on to our third possible thief of joy. And in Matthew chapter two, we read about the wise men. It says, after Jesus' birth, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and they asked, where is the child who's been born king of the Jews? So we don't know a whole lot about them, whether they came from Persia or China or India, but they saw the star and they followed what they knew and they came to Jerusalem and they figured, well, that's where King is. Let's go find King Herod and say, where's the new King? Now, here's the problem. They didn't have everything they needed to know. They were confused. Okay, we got here. Where's this baby? We don't know where it is. So they go to Herod. They're they're looking around. They're saying, where's this new baby? And the king doesn't have any idea either. So what do they do? They go to the scriptures. The scribes and the teachers of the law, they start searching the Old Testament, the word of God, and they find out that he's going to be born in Bethlehem. So here's what happened. The wise men took what they knew and they moved on that, but it wasn't enough. They still needed some insights to say, oh, it's Bethlehem. And so then they moved over there until the right moment. This issue of confusion, just like hurt and anxiety, it drains your joy. In fact, I would say the number one question I get as a pastor is what do I do next? I don't know what to do with this. How do I do this? It's confusion. And when we're confused, it's hard to have joy. Now, the wise men, they received the star. They knew something was going on and they started following that star, but it wasn't everything. It was more like a compass. It wasn't a map. And we tend to want a map. We want the whole thing mapped out. Okay, if I do this and I do that, and how does this gonna work and what's next? God doesn't give us a map. He gives us a compass. He gives us enough to take the next step. In fact, in Psalm 119, we read these words. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. This word becomes that lamp for us to take the next step. As we abide in Christ, as we focus on him, the word helps overcome the confusion. Well, there's a picture on the screen that I took this past week or one of our team members did. This is what I call RBF, resting Bible face. We need to have our RBF, resting Bible face every day. For me, when I get up in the morning and read through, I keep it open on my desk. I have it with me. I carry it around because I need to be hearing from God. For me, for my family, for this church family. I need the word as that compass because if I don't, that's when I end up wearing this I'm confused shirt all the time. But the word of God is what gives me the lamp, the light. In fact, in Isaiah, it says this, the word is this, uh, here's the way, this is it, walk in it. And so I know what to do. I know where to go when I keep the word central rather than letting confusion guide me and lead me. It keeps me from having joy. Let's go back to the upper room when the disciples were finding out that Jesus was leaving. And in John 15, he says this about joy. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. So he told us to remain or focus on him, but also focus on his words. If we want to have joy, that perspective we need is where are we focusing? We focus on him. We focus on his word. So the story continues in Matthew 2 with these words. It says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And going into the house, the wise men saw the child with Mary, his mother. They fell down and worshiped him. Ultimately, joy happens for them. Rather than being confused, 
Well, the passage we just read, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, my joy will be in you and have much fruit. So we have anxiety that can steal our joy. We have hurt that can steal our joy. We also have confusion that can steal our joy. Unless we grab hold of and abide in the word the way God wants us to. God's given us the scriptures to help us in those moments so that we have the strength to follow him, to do what he says, to let his ways work in us, and to let him lead us and let us know what's next so that we can walk in the fullness of joy. Well, there's one more character. This character is Herod. Herod was the king in Jerusalem, and he really didn't like what he was hearing. You see, he's the one character who ends up with no joy in this story. And here's why. Where your joy comes from determines when it will run out. Where your joy comes from determines where it, when it will run out. If your joy comes from focusing on the purposes of God, it's never going to run out. But if my joy is, comes from recognition, as long as I'm being recognized, I'll have joy. But the minute I'm not, my joy is gone. If convenience is this focus of my life and everything being convenient, the minute something's inconvenient, joy's gone. And the reality is it didn't steal it from me. I didn't have joy in the first place because those are not sources of joy. Sources of joy are knowing. Again, joy comes from a focus on the assurance that God has a purpose for my life and everything will be all right. That's where I focus. That's where I put my eyes. That's what I spend my time looking at. In Hebrews chapter 12, we're told a great secret of Jesus when it comes to joy. It says, fixing or focusing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the author and finisher, perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning and shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So focusing on Jesus, he has joy on the cross, not because he enjoyed the cross, it was painful. He didn't find joy in hanging there and dying, but he found joy in the fact is, I know where this is going. I have a focus on the purpose that this is about to accomplish that eventually led to sitting down at the right hand of the Father. So joy comes when I begin to focus in the right place. For the joy set before him, and here's the question, what have you set before you? What is it that's guiding your joy? What is it that's leading you? That is what your joy is connected to. That's why in this journey through the Christmas story, God's asking us to make a choice. And here's the problem. Sometimes I hear people say, choose joy. You really can't choose joy. In fact, you can only choose your focus. You can't choose joy. You can choose what you focus on and then your focus will determine your joy because then I'm focused on who God is and what he wants to do and the purpose he has for me. So here's Herod's problem. Herod had his sons killed because he thought they were a threat. Just like Mary's potential for anxiety, Joseph's for hurt, the wise men for confusion, when we come to this next piece of clothing, whether we keep it or not, comparison is the thief of joy. One of the reasons some of us don't have joy is we're always comparing ourselves. Oh, look what they have. Oh, look what they got. Oh, they have more likes than me. They bought that. Where did they go? What are they doing? We're so busy comparing ourselves to everybody else and what they have that we can't have joy. In fact, Herod's the one who never got joy. And this is probably the biggest thief of joy is always comparing. Why did they get that? Why didn't that happen for me? Why are they always first? One of the thieves that we've got to figure out, am I going to let this stay in my closet or not? Is whether I'm going to always be comparing. 
Let's go back to our definition one more time. Joy comes from a focus on the assurance that God has a purpose for my life and everything will be all right. It doesn't come from focusing on the anxiety of what could happen. It doesn't come from focusing on the hurts I've received in the past. It doesn't come from the confusion or not knowing what to do. It doesn't come from comparing with everybody. Those are places that will steal our joy. In fact, in John 15, here's what Jesus goes on to say in that same upper womb conversation we've looked at several times already. It says, remain in my love. So we remain in him or we focus in him. We focus on his word. We focus on his love and obey the commandments and remain in his love, focus in his love. I've told you this so that you'd have joy and joy would be complete. Comparison will steal it every time, but we focus on him. We focus on the word and we focus on his love for us. Well, this last piece that I think will help us actually comes from Philippians. The book of Philippians is the happiest book there is. The word joy and rejoice shows up dozens and dozens of times. And you would think that Paul, when he's writing the happiest book of the Bible, maybe he wrote it from the happiest place on earth, but no, he wasn't in Disneyland. He was in jail. He was in prison for preaching. And here's what he says. Rejoice in the Lord always And again, I say rejoice. Notice that word, rejoice in the Lord always. And I'm going to say it again, rejoice. Now, all of us know our parents repeated stuff because one, it was really important to them or two, it was really hard to get it. And this is really hard to get sometimes. Rejoice in the Lord when? Always? If, how can I have joy and find joy in the midst of Anxiety, hurt, comparison, confusion. On the next screen, there are three items that have something in common. Now you might look at that and say, what do these three things have in common? Let me tell you. These black cabinets from Ikea are created 100% by recycled plastic and wood. Old plastic that's been thrown thrown away, old wood that's not useful, they've recycled it. This is made completely from recycled plastic and wood. Let's look at this one. This tennis shoe is made 100% from recycled chewing gum. You're like, what? There's actually a company called Gumshoe in Amsterdam. They go out every day and they scrape gum off of rails and doorknobs and any place they find it, people have put their gum and they take it, recycle it and make these shoes out of gum. Crazy. Let's look at this. Christmas cards with an elephant on it. Who wouldn't want to get a Christmas card with an elephant wearing a Santa hat? But the reality is, you know what these Christmas cards are made out of? Recycled elephant poo. That's right. They collect elephant poo, recycle it, and you might get it in your mailbox. The thing that these three all have in common, thrown away plastic, thrown away gum, thrown away elephant stuff, all of it gets recycled to have purpose, to have function. And that's really what this verse is about. Rejoice is a way of saying recycle. So what I do is I take anxiety And when I recycle it, I rejoice and it turns to joy. I recycle hurt. When when I've been hurt, I begin to rejoice. And when I rejoice, that hurt turns to joy. That confusion turns to joy. That comparison turns to joy. And so here's what we do. We practice joy by focusing on God's goodness. We practice it by focusing on God's goodness. If you want to do anything well, you've got to practice. You want to play the piano or the guitar or some instrument, you practice day after day. You want to be a good artist, you practice day after day. You want to be a good athlete, you practice day after day. You want to be good with joy, you have to practice rejoicing when? Always. So again, here's our other thief to joy. We have the potential to let comparison steal it. Or we can choose to rejoice in the Lord always. And I'll say it again, rejoice. 
That's God's purposes for us, that we would rejoice in the midst of everything. Michael, let me run through these four thieves. When you're going through your closet, we're gonna make sure we get rid of anxiety, you hold on to it, you can't have joy. Your hurts, you hold on to them, you can't have joy. Confusion, you hold on to it and don't follow the light God has for you, you won't have joy. You keep comparison with others, you won't have joy. But in his presence, in his presence, in him being present with you, there's fullness of joy. As you release by forgiving, as you remain in his words, as you rejoice in him, God says, I want to give you a joy like you've never known before. Here's an important truth. My joy is not determined by what happens to me. That's not what determines it, but what Christ is doing in me and through me. And God wants to work in each of us this weekend. I want to encourage you, find a scripture. Find something that will strengthen you. If anxiety is your thief, ask God for a scripture to help you. If lack of forgiveness, if hurt is your thief, ask God for a scripture. If confusion is your thief, God, give me something from your word. If comparison is what's driving you from having joy, ask God for a scripture. You might want to write it down, tape it next to your computer, put it on your mirror in the bathroom, put it on your dashboard, put it next to your headboard, put it in your briefcase or your purse, put it somewhere to read. And to me, that's been the strength for every single one of these areas, for anxiety, for hurt, for confusion, for comparison, is to let the word of God dwell richly. I love in those moments to take the word and to memorize it. There's a passage of scripture the Lord often uses for me when I get in one of those four areas of being stolen from, and it comes from Psalm 34. Let me tell you up front, Psalm 34 was written by King David. He had been anointed king, but he wasn't actually king yet because there was a bad king still on the throne. And so he had to hide in a cave for his life. And while he's hiding in this cave, you think he could have joy? You better believe it. And here's how. Here's what he says in Psalm 34. I, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be on my lips. My soul will make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to the Lord Those who focus on the Lord, those who remain in the Lord, those who abide in the Lord, those who focus in him are radiant with joy. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles because the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Oh, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are inclined to their cry. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. That passage of scripture, sometimes I'm saying it through the day. Sometimes I'm reminding myself as I drive. Sometimes I'm laying in bed saying that word. That's what brings joy. God wants to release that joy in you. And I want to pray for you right now that whatever's stealing joy from you, God would bring his life and strength. Lord, you know every person right now, you knew they would tune in today. Some are so filled with anxiety and it's drained their joy. Lord, let them know that you're with them. You've not forsaken them. You are with them and you will watch over them. There are some today, Lord, that are hurt And you know the hurt. You know how deep it was. But Lord, give them the grace to forgive in this moment that it will no longer drain their joy. Lord, you know those who are confused right now. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it. They don't know what's next. And they're they're just so confused. But Lord, give them the light they need from your word and the assurance that you're a God who speaks. And Lord, there are those who are stuck in that comparison They are constantly looking at everybody else and what they have, but let them be set free 
Like Mary, let us choose your presence. Like Joseph, let us choose grace. Like the wise men, let's take a step with the light that we have. Lord, I just pray that grace into every household, that each one of us would have more joy, that that trickle of joy that's starting would just overflow and we would be filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, allow the Lord to speak to you, encourage you in these next moments as the worship team comes to declare joy to the world. Well, we've heard from Mary, Joseph, the wise men. I don't want to leave anybody out. Here's a passage of scripture in Luke chapter two that includes some more of the characters. And here's what it says. The angel said to the shepherds, don't be afraid. Don't be anxious. 
I bring you good news. It will be great joy to all people. Today, a savior has been born to you. This story of joy is to be your story. It's a story in which you are able to choose what am I going to hold on to that sparks joy and what am I going to get rid of that steals joy? And you know, rather than taking these as a goodwill, I think we just need to say goodbye to them so nobody ever wears them again. Reminder here, joy comes from a focus on the assurance, that strong assurance that God has a purpose for my life. He has a purpose for your life and everything's going to be all right. I'm going to speak God's blessing on you, but before I do, I just want to remind you to stick around for a few moments for the wrap. It's a moment where we take the word and unpack it and apply it and say, what do I do with this? How do I make it reality in my life? You don't want to miss these next moments. Lord, I pray that every household will be filled with joy. Spark joy in them. Overflow them with joy. Despite all that they may be facing in this season, let joy rise up within them. Let it go before them. Let them imagine more joy in their lives and all that you have for them. May you bless and encourage and strengthen your people as you let your light shine on them, as your love overflows them, as your word guides them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week in the Lord. Come on yes. in. Come on. It's joy to the world, everybody. How about yes. you type in J-O-Y. Type in joy. Yeah. Give us in a Christmas joy. emoji on there online. Welcome to the rap. This, we have the rap crew with us. We're going to just talk about uh, Pastor Wayne, mm-hmm. man, just dropped about joy. A, a whole semester's worth of right. information oh, on us. But it was so it was so good, so yeah. powerful, and there's so much to unpack. So let's just start unpacking it. Yeah, I, the thing that he kind of hammered in that was so great is joy comes from the assurance that God has a purpose for my life and everything will be all right. Yeah. That's pretty intense. Just like that God has a purpose no matter what we're going through, what we feel, what has happened, what we're afraid of. He has a purpose. And I love that it was practical things. I felt like there's a medicine cabinet in the word of God open up for whatever that is needed. Absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah, I love the... Um, it's, he also said that to focus, right? The focus mm-hmm. is so important. So uh, he talks about the joy. Mm-hmm. So it made me question, like, where is my joy comes from? Where is my joy? Mm-hmm. Or what is my joy connected to? Because I cannot always connect my joy to my husband because most of the time he is the issue why I'm not <laughs> joyful. <laughs> so it is so important. My to middle name like, is Joy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really actually very important to know where is your joy comes from. Mm-hmm. That's Absolutely. <laughs> Where's your joy comes from, Vaughn? Oh, it comes from my wife. Joy <laughs> comes from my wife. Yeah. It's well, the only great, great answer. <laughs> The um, book that he referenced, Spark Joy, yeah. I have read it. I have it. I really loved it. And I love the way he gave this illustration here because there's so much in there to dig in. First of all, like mm-hmm. in practical things, when there's things, that book gives you reasons, like reasons why we hold on to things. There can be so many different reasons. And yet it gives you answers for each one and ways that help you to be set free. So I feel like in this, with anxiety and hurt and confusion, all these things, there is a great exchange with God always. That's mm. never even like fair or balanced. Yeah. We mm. give him the ruins, our rubbles, yeah. our brokenness or whatever. And the exchange is always that he gives us more than enough, mm. abounding in more than we could ever ask or imagine. Yeah. So the one that stuck out to me was just forgiveness. Um, wow. and yeah, like hurt when you hold on to something. Um, my aunt has this quote that she always references and is that um, hate corrodes the con- the container that it is held in wow. and i love this forgive everyone everything, everything. Yeah. Wow. it doesn't leave room for anything no. because as dr wayne said he has forgiven me yeah. everything that's right yeah. that's right yeah it's like he even uh, you know 
he's like, well, what? You don't know what they did. You don't know what you know what they did to me. And he's, yeah. he's like, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, it, you know, it, to us, of course, it matters in a way. Mm -hmm. But like in the grand scheme of things, in the grand picture, from God's perspective, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, because yeah. because He has forgiven us. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, that's that, that's absolutely right. I, I think that's the the major thread that holds this whole idea together mm -hmm. because. You know, Dr. Wayne takes these these four thieves, he call it, of joy. Because mm. joy can be such a transient thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're experiencing more of this mm -hmm. than, than joy mm. in, in your life, if you're, if you're, if you're like me. It, really, if mm -hmm. you're like me. And, and so but for Dr. Wayne to take his message and focus on these things as his points yeah. and say, you know, take the Mary experience and her anxiety, take the mm -hmm. Joseph experience and the hurt that he had to experience, and, you know, the comparison of Herod's. And then Dr. Wayne turns it and says, hey, this is how you deal with it. You come back to the definition of, definition mm -hmm. of joy, right? You take all this and you focus on the assurance yeah. of God's purpose for your life mm -hmm. yeah. and that every little thing is going to be all right. <laughs> hey. You find joy in those moments, that's right? right? You find joy in those well, that's moments. That's great. Super good. Like he said, where your joy comes from determines when it will run out. Yeah. Uh, and I can just think of when it does run out, it's a great indicator. Okay, so why? So where was where is my expectations or where am I looking for yeah. that? Yeah, uh, I think there's another, or I, it reminded me of a, another quote. I think Reinhard Bonnke used to say that mm. if, if you are fueled by, peop, by the praise of man, you'll be destroyed by man's criticism. Mm. So like, you know, in this day and age, how we are fueled a lot by follows and likes and reposts and uh and being known or something you yeah. know or the, like how he um uh, talked about comparison you yeah. know the social media platforms are, are really mm -hmm. they're fun but they're extremely dangerous mm -hmm. uh, you know because it can become a really big vehicle to compare yourself to so everyone else yeah. and to mm -hmm. see your own insufficiency and I think someone else said it here, like if you're concentrating on what you don't have, mm -hmm. you can't celebrate what you do have. That's mm -hmm. right. What we do have is, That's right. is really great, mm -hmm. you know, for all of us. Because yeah. all of us have a purpose, like mm -hmm. what it says, like we have a purpose. God has a plan, mm -hmm. a purpose for us. And there, that's why we can't compare because there's a job that only you can do. Mm -hmm. There's an assignment that you, only you can do. And we have uh, assignment homework that we can only do. Mm -hmm. right. So we, the comparing is a big one too. Mm -hmm. Almost close to that unforgiveness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that whole that comparison idea of what we do have and not what we don't have. Yeah, it made me think of how Dr. Wayne frames these things as things we need to like take out of our lives because mm -hmm. they're thieves, they're mm -hmm. stealing joy. But then it occurred to me as he's taking this stuff out and he's putting it in his box, you know, a lot of times we don't have room in our lives for joy because mm. all this stuff is taking up all this space. So when we get rid of this stuff, you're making space for more joy mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah, and I, uh, and I too, with the, with the whole analogy of like, you know, accumulating clothes and trying to declutter some things, that, which I think we can all, you know, we can all associate ourselves in that. But um, at one point in time, these things were, were of value in our life. Right. Yeah, but right. They, they kind of, they... They've worked their season, and now it's time for them to go. And mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, how even the, the lady in the book, how she, she'll take, she'll go through almost a ceremonial type of process mm -hmm. to where she'll thank this thing for its service. Now go. Yeah. You know, almost to kind of like cut the cord and, and, and define the relationship yeah. almost <laughs> and then yeah. move on. You yeah. know, it was, it's yeah. powerful. Because, you know, like... We were talking about earlier. I, I, I'm, I'm a pack rat. I'm actually not a pack rat. I'm a pack elephant. <laughs> I, I got a whole bunch of stuff, and I need to get rid of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Dr. Wayne also says, you cannot choose joy, but you can choose your focus, and your focus determines your joy, mm. which I think is such a great practical way for us to be like, okay, what am I focusing? What am I giving attention to? What am I giving power to? What am I giving my power to? Um, I think that's... That's really great. Yeah, and way. then I, one other point, the, the recycling thing, uh -huh. which I think is a really powerful illustration that he gave to us about how um, he referenced some of those, uh, the shoes and, and the right. cards that were made right. out of recycled materials. Right. Waste. Waste yeah. materials, right? Uh, they can still serve a purpose. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so he, 
he kind of walks us through some things about how to do that. I think it's really I helpful. I do love that our God is in a business of recycle. Mm -hmm. It yes. totally gives me hope because mm -hmm. I've been recycled so many times. Yeah. I'm Hello. still getting recycled. Mm -hmm. But it, it doesn't go to waste. Mm -hmm. our, our sin, our past, our hurt, whatever it is, yeah. God can turn it around mm -hmm. for uh, yeah. redeem it. Mm -hmm. So we can have re uh, joy. Mm -hmm. And rejoice. Yeah, you're and happy then, about that. Someone post a, a <laughs> hand emoji yeah, in the in the chat there if you're hands. grateful for the recycling power of, of God. God. Because yes. he gets all the glory and all the yeah. honor because he's turned something around. Recycled for purpose and function. Dr. Wayne also said, joy does not determine by what happens to me, but what Christ is doing in me and through me. Really yeah. yeah. I mean, God is, there's, there's a different set of balances in the kingdom of God that is completely opposite of this earth and this world. Yeah. And so sometimes we just have to see what standard am I living by? Yeah. And that can bring so much freedom, clarity as well, yeah, that's good. Um, but also hope and strength. That's good. Let's turn the corner, guys. So like as we're, we just experienced the sermon, we heard the information, we're talking about it. Now what's the exit strategy into the week? What do we, how can we put this and maybe come up with some, some, some ideas and some ways that people can kind of begin to recycle some of these things that have been hoarding all the space in our life you know our god is a consistent god mm -hmm. so we need to be consistently uh consistently practicing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to right. me practicing joy could be simple we love to dance our family love to dance mm -hmm. so it just gives me i don't know i'm just joyful when my body is moving mm -hmm. you know it's just another way for me to practice joy mm -hmm. with my family right. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah. that's right because your circumstances don't change mm -hmm. around you right. right that's kind of stealing joy but in that moment you can find joy in that dancing and that rejoicing mm -hmm. with Philippians 4 I, the word again right mm -hmm. again I, the practice is about again we're yeah. doing it again rejoice mm -hmm. in Lord again always and that helps us with this idea of focus right focusing yeah. on the purpose of God because if, if the definition is fundamentally the assurance of the purpose of yeah. God mm -hmm. and it's and it's all gonna work out there's this psyche if you just keep focusing on That's what really God's good. purpose is for your life. Get in mm -hmm. the word of God, but how is that defining purpose for you in your mm -hmm. life? I think really we get take steps forward. Yeah, I think one thing that is so key is that he's saying, remain in me, remember your words. So I think it's always going back to getting into the word of God. Yeah. So what are some practical ways? Okay, the Bible app is free and yeah. you can just go to a chapter, push play, and while you're doing your makeup yeah. or whatever it is, you can be hearing the word of God while yeah. you're driving. So I think that's a practical a a way to do it. Um, and then I think all the scriptures that Dr. Wayne just did in this message, I could go back, write them yeah. down, and really like, how do I put them into my week? Not just I heard it, I'm done, but how do I take those and apply them this week? Stay connected to your small groups. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stay yes. connected to people to talk like this on, through a Zoom mm -hmm. chat or something like that. So it, it doesn't have to be a big group. It could be yeah. four, right? It could be just like what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. But stay connected to the church and what uh, mm -hmm. the, the church's services. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stay connected to the rap, what That's we're doing right. here. And you know what? It's, okay. I've, I've, I, you know what? Doing all that's making me feel spectacular already. <laughs> You know, and in fact, yes. speaking of spectacular, another way you can just real time, one easy thing, we're not, just come drop in. We've got our Christmas um, spectacular um, here at Cathedral of Faith. It goes on Monday through Thursdays from 6 to 9 on the half hours. On the weekends, we've half got hours. live performances from mm -hmm. 6 to 9. I mean, it's a great way um, for you to, again, be inspired mm -hmm. by, Absolutely. by joyful moments, joyful experiences. And in those moments, feel that joy kind of rise up in you and to the point where it overflows and you, you know, you can't help That's but right. dance and sing and share Amen. with everybody else. That's and That's celebrate it. Christ. That's it's a practical right. way to say Jesus Christ is important. Mm. This is Christmas season is about him. So we are going to celebrate him Amen. together with our church Amen. family and with our family in your car. So you don't even have to get out yes. of your car. Right. Our scripture is rejoice in the Lord always. Mm. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord sometimes, no. Rejoice in the Lord when I feel like it, no. Rejoice in the Lord always. always. And again, I say rejoice. rejoice. Check your focus, Cathedral of Faith. Yep. Focus in on the Word of God. Focus in on the presence of God. Amen. We celebrate the, in the Advent season, in the season of Christmas, we celebrate the withness with God. Yeah. God is with us. Yes. Hold on to that. Focus on that and watch joy fill your life and clean your closets while you're doing it. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> One shirt at a time. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in and yeah. have an awesome weekend. Yes. We love you. Merry and as Christmas. always, it's, it's a wrap. wrap. Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh.